Hey guys, thanks for watching. As always, uh, on the YouTube channel, I talk to my favorite people, my genetic twins, like uh, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> it's good to see you, brother. It's good to see you. I know you're a big YouTube fan. I know you're a yeah, subscriber to my I'm, channel. I'm number one in the first person there. <laughs> he was every... the first one. Yeah, first, <laughs> first subscriber. <laughs> first subscriber. <laughs> Do I get a medal or something for that? You do. You get to be on the podcast. That's your reward. Uh, that's it. <laughs> um, hit that subscribe button and enjoy my conversation with Mr. Chris Hemsworth. Uh, Chris, it's been way too long, buddy. Congratulations. It has. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, congratulations on still being alive after your new series. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to talk Limitless. We're going to talk about a bunch of things. First, let's rem reminisce for a second. I went back into my, my own small brain that exists. I think I met you <laughs> 2010, Comic Con. Mm hmm. I was like, oh, they actually cast Thor. Like, they just found <laughs> Thor. <laughs> when you think about the journey of the last dozen years, I don't know. I mean, does it feel like a, like a, it's gone by in an instant, or does it feel like it's been 100 years since that time? Uh, you, you both. It feels, on one hand, like it was last year, like it was yesterday, and then the other, it feels like it's all I've been doing for my entire life, and, and in the best way. You know, yeah. that it, when something has that amount of uh, detail and requires that amount of commitment and that amount of time, it, you know, everything I've done is in comparison to that, and everything I do is parallel to it you know i can yeah. run off and do other films and other characters and so on and then i come back to thor right. and so it's um it's been the driving sort of foundation through my career and it's been amazing it's uh it's funny to think <laughs> about like the different contexts i always like see you guys in and like comic cons or podcast studios mm -hmm. or whatever and I, I don't expect you to remember this i think the second time i met you was at sundance mm -hmm. and it was you and liam like getting free snowboards, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, Do you remember that? yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were there with uh, Oakley, I think, or someone. And, yeah, and, yeah. That was the the, uh, the 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 early days of of fame, and like really, really just taking advantage of all the free free kit they give you. I was going to say, like, sick free snowboards, <laughs> sunglasses. I'm coming. What's the What's the weirdest free shit you've gotten over the years? What's the stuff that? Uh, I mean, I've been sent some pretty random stuff you know I, I got um i remember getting <laughs> sent a shirt once and i was like oh this is nice i put it on and i was like it kind of sm smells like it's been worn and sure enough there's some heavy B bo scent uh a in, bo in, scented shirt yeah right under no someone had worn it oh i what. see yeah <laughs> <laughs> got second hand <laughs> second it was a it was a, a hand-me-down and uh you know good good hey no waste I you, guess, you can you can have the shirt off my back literally after this. I don't think we'll this is quite the same size. We'll <laughs> <laughs> um, this show is amazing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Limitless. Um, so this is a new show. It's Nat Geo. It's on Disney Plus. Um, you know, it's not your run of the mill reality show when it's not only you, but it's like Darren Aronofsky. Mm. Come on, like, yeah. this is the way to do it. Yeah. Um, is this a pitch to you? Is this something you develop? Like, do they come to you and say like we want to try to kill you six weeks in a row? <laughs> like, what yeah. what is this? So Darren Aronofsky came to me probably going on three years now and um and said i want to do this doc series it's about longevity uh basically how to live a longer better life and we're going to put you through a series of different tests and challenges to test along a lot of the uh, emerging science around longevity so there'll be an episode on shock and we're going to throw you in the arctic ocean and we can, there's a stress episode and we're going to walk across a beam on a skyscraper um fasting episode uh, acceptance of death and a few others and um, I was like okay different to anything I've, I've, I've done before and, and sounds fascinating and, and why not um, we initially were supposed to shoot it over three or four weeks and then due to COVID and different schedules and so on the thing got pushed over about two and a half years so it you know I, I'd be lying if I said I knew what the show was at the beginning versus right. what it what became in, in a wonderful way it, it was allowed to uh, evolve constantly um, we're adapting to different things that were changing constantly but also my interest and my sort of commitment to it grew even more and then Darren said great we're gonna ramp this up and ramp that um, and then just having more time to sit with each episode we could flesh them out in greater detail uh, it was well, one of the best experiences I've had it, it was um, as you say before they were you know the irony of it all was in order to live longer let's attempt to kill you uh, and so there was some pretty <laughs> intense kind of stunts and situations it, I found myself in. It has to be seen to be believed. I mean, you, you know that, like, like, first of all, this is a return to your roots, your reality roots, obviously Dancing with the Stars. Oh, and yeah, this is yeah. This true. This, that was my real inspiration. I was like, <laughs> I kind of raised the bar there and let's see if I can 
continue <laughs> to you know, rise. If you wanted to do reality, well, the bar, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> if you wanted to do reality, you could have just done Living with the Hemsworth and become a billionaire. Like that's an easier <laughs> show, and there's no risk of death. Yeah. Well, there are years you you come to my house sometime, and you'll see some risk of death. <laughs> you'll see that. Uh, you know, but the dangerous animals I have, my three kids. Right. <laughs> savage beasts. They are climbing the walls, literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first episode. We'll talk about a couple of the episodes. Um, stress is the first one, mm-hmm. and uh, it feels like a glorified backdoor pitch to put yourself in a Mission Impossible movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting. The stress one, like. I'd walk out in a beam a uh, thousand feet off the ground and look, I'm not running alongside the building like Tom Cruise, uh, but that was this was my first taste of it and it was interesting. I went up there and my heart rate, heart rate went to about 145 and then and they were monitoring you know, the, my, my breath, my heart rate, so on. And uh, through the techniques I'd learned, I was able to bring my heart rate back down to like 80. And it was just fascinating to be able to have something wildly entertaining, but also backed by science and yeah. see it in real time um, being put to use. So that was a really cool one. I mean, even prior to that actual, um, the beam, the walk across the skyscraper, uh, I worked with uh, the special forces in Australia, did some drown proofing exercises. and That stuff, watching that. Oh, it's intense. Tied my hands and feet together and threw me in a pool. And I feel and, like I was watching a snuff film. I'm yeah. like, I'm literally going to watch Chris Hemsworth <laughs> die in front of me. <laughs> I thought I was part of one. It's, uh... <laughs> but is it wrong that it makes me, it's my happy place to watch you be stressed for an hour? It, like, oh, like. Hey, it, it, whatever, whatever gets you there. That's, that's, that's it. That's what I need. I'll provide that entertainment <laughs> and I'll be the conduit for your happiness. <laughs> but I like, look, it's, I think it's really interesting because the show is very intimate, very kind of revealing. Mm. Like, you know, your family's in the show and you talk about, like, it's very relatable to hear you talk about stress and like your idea of stress Mm. is like being in a restaurant with your kids melting down and people watching you, which yeah. I think any parent, any human being Anyone can basically. Feels. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of uh, amplified a bit if people whip out their phones and they start filming. You know? right. and, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, I think being, you know, if I'm prepped for a situation, I'm walking on stage, I mean, there's, a, there's a red carpet, an event, I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, there's a lot of energy in, in this, in this uh, experience and – I focus and I, I know what I'm doing. F- for me, what catches me and makes me anxious is, yeah, in public situations when I'm unaware of it and all of a sudden, well, there's a crowd of people. All of a sudden, something happens and everyone's looking. And like and um, and, and in this episode, we talk about it. You know, It's about just coming back to your breath. And also, I think we're so used to triggering our fight or flight um, yeah. that, that, that we're constantly walking in a state of a, adrenaline when we don't need to be. And so when those things happen now, I'm like, yeah, there's not a dinosaur chasing you. There's no great threat. This is this right. is you know this is um, you've, uh, there's a pre-programmed thing that's occurring here, which I have to kind of back myself out of. Um, well, it's interesting. I mean, we're also living in times where it feels like we're a constant threat. Like, oh, like yeah. the world's about to end yeah. in 17 different ways. So like, we're is. all going through yeah. this together in a way. Yeah, and it does. It goes back to uh, you know many many. Many <laughs> years ago, and in, in, in our early development as human beings, of you know that was there for our survival. You know, the, the fight or flight was there, so we didn't get eaten by a dinosaur, and we're right. constantly on that. We now in a space where we're not threatened day to day, um, yet we are still triggering ourselves continuously. And due to a sort of social media, everything on there is designed to trigger a big emotion. Yeah, and um, so it's and it's really da- damaging. The the the, the de- it's so detrimental to our health and. Um, you look at sort of brain health, cardiovascular, heart disease, so on. All of these things, stress is one of the biggest um, influences on, on, on being taken down by one of these things. And so reduction of stress, stress management, um, having a, a greater place of stillness in your life and more consistency with that it, it is, is not only with your emotional health, your mental health, but your physical health. Yeah. You know, I find my injuries play up when I'm stressed, um, sure. if I haven't slept enough or if I'm worried about something. My back starts to hurt, you know, and so it's all linked. The whole sort of kinetic chain of our our system. So we need to give it all equal attention. Well, let's apply this to your career. What's the most stressed you've been going into a job? Like the night before, mm, where you were yeah. like, "Get me out of this! Back me out! This is not going to work." Um, well, I just finished uh, shooting Fur- Furiosa with George Miller. It's a part of the Mad Max saga, and. Um, that often I get a script and I know from the first read, the second read, I know who the character is and I get a, an instant sort of visceral kind of 
feeling attached to it. And I go, right, got it, right? This I had read two years before started, I started shooting and was in awe of the script. It's the most beautiful thing I've read. I love George Miller. But I didn't know who this character was. And we did about four weeks of rehearsals and we started digging in and diving into it and things started coming to me. And then about two weeks prior to shooting, something clicked. I went, ooh, ooh, I think, I think that's who it is. I think that's how we moved. But it, in the build-up, and I'm talking a couple of years, yeah. I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, I'm going to derail, you know, one of the most iconic um, I'm gonna franchises. Down down the most yeah, I'm going to bring down <laughs> Mad Max. It's going to be my fault. Not in the right way. <laughs> Not in the right way. No, no. Yeah, well, we're, well, I was going to say, Warlord Dementus sounds like a really sweet guy. <laughs> yeah, so he's a pleasant fellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were kicking out about that. I have just talked to Anya. I'm... I'm a Miller obsessive. Yeah. Miller Road is like one of the top it's movies the best, I've ever seen. One of my favorite films. Yep. So, um, did it live up to the experience in retrospect? Now, so you found the character. Oh, mate, it it, it uh, the best. I think the best experience of my career, um, and something I'm the most proud of too. Uh, I put more work into it than anything I've ever done, and the collaboration I I had with George was just beautiful and working with Anya was incredible. Um, Had you ever met with George before? Were you like too young when he was looking for the new Max? Was there? I uh, I think I asked my manager years ago about Mad Max um, and then Tom Hardy had already been cast. Got it. And, uh, and so, yeah, but I, I'd, I'd always sort of wondered, oh, you know, I'd miss, my, I'd miss my window. And then the opportunity came and... Uh, you yeah. found it, man. I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, look, there's another... Um, you know, there's a really revealing, I can't remember which episode it's in, there's a revealing moment, as I said, it's a, an interesting show because it shows some very candid moments and you're speaking very openly and something I didn't, wasn't aware of, like you talk about like getting into acting at first mm -hmm. as a means of like getting your family out of debt, essentially? Pretty much, yeah. I, I mean, I, we all have different sort of motivations at different times and, and but I was in high school, uh, you know, my parents were broke and, and, and I mean, like a lot of people though, you know, and, and living sort of week to week paycheck and... Uh, and I remember talking to my dad about uh, when you know when would he pay the house off, and he just sort of laughed and said, "Oh, never," you know. And, and I thought that's unfair, you know. Yeah. And and uh, I don't know why I felt that I would say financial burden. It wasn't on me, but I felt it on them uh, as a young kid, and just wanted to you know do something about it. I had the most wonderful childhood. They would save up all all, all year long and work their ass off, and then take us on a two week camping trip, you know. And that yeah. was that was what we did, and. Um, so that became my sort of driving force to, to I don't know, make some money and, and, and help out. And I looked at a million different things, and but I always loved filmmaking and, and, and stories and watching films, but I didn't think of it as a career right. until someone said, do this acting course. And I said, oh, yeah, cool. And then I did one acting course. And I'm like, I'm going to Hollywood. This is what I'm doing. And everything fell by the wayside, and that became my, my focus um, in, a, in an obsessive way. Um, and... I don't know. I had a. I think when when you when there's something outside of yourself driving you to it to, yeah. to 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 any success, it it has a bit more substance. I think. Yes, I had my personal um, goals and things I wanted to achieve, but I was doing it for someone else. And it was a really interesting transition when I finally made some money and and I paid my parents' house off. I went, oh, now what? You know. And yeah. I had to. Because um, I would think that's so ingrained. Like if you grew up like that and yeah. always worrying about money and seeing your parents stressed, it's yeah. like. When the money comes in, it's not an immediate switch. It probably takes no. a while to actually. I, I'm not. I'm not. This is going to sound absurd, but like I have moments where I'm like, got to go. Hang on, are we okay? Like, is this going to run out? Are we gonna, like, yeah. is it all going to end? And am I going to be back to where where we were? And and um, but I've always, I think it. I loved. I've always loved acting, as I said, and 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 being a part of the process. And so I was able to fall in love with it then. Um, Again, I think yeah. you know, and 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 you got to find different motivations all the time because we we have goals, we achieve them, and on to the next one. And that's why you're here on the podcast, as you know. I slipped you a fifty dollar bill yeah, at the end. I of said this. if you seventy five dollars, and then and, you know, <laughs> then he takes his shirt off. Yeah, take my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a drinking game with your projects. When is he? Oh, six minutes into the first six. episode. Yep, that's about right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's talk about something that I honestly have never talked about before, which is getting a good night's sleep. But it's kind of the secret thing that's been plaguing me. And I found the product that's helping me out. And this is going to help you guys. Blissey's Silk Pillowcases. These are a game changer, guys. 
remember, there's nothing more important than your sleep. Without a good night's sleep, I'm lost. I'm dead to the world. That's where Blissey comes in. These are 100% mulberry silk pillowcases. They give you better hair and skin. It reduces frizz, tangles, and prevents breakage. Plus, they're hypoallergenic. They are machine washable. They are durable. You're not gonna wake up with like itches and rashes with like cotton pillowcases. Oh, here, by the way, is the most important part for me. Waking up hot and sweaty. Is there anything worse? It doesn't happen with Blissey. And it's also not like one side of it is cool and the other side is hot. Both sides are cool. This is the perfect gift, guys, right now, because I don't know about you, I have no idea what to get my friends and family, at least I didn't, until Blissey came into my life. Who doesn't want the gift of better sleep? Trust me, a game changer. You're not gonna wake up and flip the pillow and wonder how am I gonna get comfortable? It's all there for you with this game-changing pillowcase. Trust me, and everybody loves them. They have a ton of different prints and colors, and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. They have over 1 million fans raving, now 1 million and 1 thanks to me, and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissy.com slash happy sad and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash happy sad. And of course, use the code happy sad to get an additional 30% off. Your skin and hair will thank you. Guys, let's talk about security, because if you don't have a VPN right now, I don't know what you're thinking. And thankfully, one of our sponsors this week on Happy, Sad, Confused is going to set you up just right. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash happy sad to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan. Plus, get this four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the episode description. I don't know how to make it any easier, any more risk-free, and it's about security, guys, because nowadays, if you don't have a VPN, you're just risking way too much. Remember, it's risk-free right now with a 30-day money-back guarantee Go to nordvpn.com slash happy sad and your coupon code, don't forget this, it's of course happy sad, NordVPN, check it out. There's also this episode, I think, <laughs> believe it's the one on acceptance that um, is amazing. It's, um, it, I don't know if you, have you watched Nathan Fielder? It feels like a Nathan Fielder episode of his show, The Rehearsal, except with you in the no. center of it. It's just this amazing, <laughs> um, okay, so basically Chris is experiencing what it's like to be an octogenarian and- yeah except the end of life yeah you're kind of like in a nursing home mm -hmm. you have the suit that approximates what it's like to be that old mm -hmm. elsa's in there in full makeup it's just it's so yeah. trippy it must have been a it, bizarre experience it, it was bizarre and uh and profound and wonderful I, I, the rest of the series uh each episode is quite physically challenging there's one on memory where we um navigate our way uh through the forest over a couple of day period and you know, and, and, and use our brains the way they should be used. Uh, this episode, as you say, acceptance of death and end of life, and the science around that states that people with a greater um, understanding that there is a finite conclusion to this or there is an end to this life and an acceptance of that live a longer life. Right. They live with a, a greater sense of gratitude and, and a greater sense of, well, it's not going to last forever, make the most of it. Um, so I was put into this immersive theatre situation over three days in, in an elderly retirement village and was interacting and talking to people who were, you know, at the final years in their life, um, in their later years. A young lady who was, had stage four cancer. Um, I talked to the, a death doula and a palliative care worker uh, who, who worked in, you know, w with people um, who, were, who were dying and um, helped them through that and helped them through or try to avoid some of the pain that's around that, but also just, again, having a greater understanding and acceptance that, that it is what it is. And uh, my wife was in it dressed as a, you know, in prost full prosthetics, but actually I didn't know she was going to be there. Um, but it was kind of life-changing, you know. It, not often, unless you have a brush with death or, yeah. you know, we, we, I guess we go to funerals occasionally and, and there's a reminder there, but to act out, what my last moments would be and actually walk through a death meditation and then describe who I would want around and so on was, as I said, profound and yeah. intense, but did make me think, wow, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is an opportunity as a young guy, not as an 85 year old going, oh, I wish I did this and this 
to go, wow, this is how I want to live. I want to live with a greater state of appreciation and also just be more present and still and not run from one thing to the next and on to the next and sort of never really soak it up and, and, and you know, appreciate what's right in front it, of you. It's a profound watching it. I can only imagine what it, the experience was like. I mean, though, I will say if you're looking for the secret to immortality, you, you have friends. You have Paul Rudd. I'm sure you mm -hmm. run into Keanu. You can just ask them what they're doing, and you could have skipped this whole process. Cause... I could have. I could have. I could have. I mean, that was <laughs> speaking of movies and characters. That was Darren Aronofsky's kind of um, the inspiration for doing the series when he did The Fountain. I was going to say and, it's, and, it's totally and a the theme. theme of his work. Yeah, is exactly yeah. that. And, and Hugh Jackman has a line in it, which is, um, "Death is a disease, and I'm going to figure out or find the cure." Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, speaking of Rudd, it seems like People Magazine is now just going down the roster of sexiest of, of yep. Avengers to go through the sexiest men. Yeah. So you got, got to Chris the, Evans is scraping the barrel. Huh? Yeah. Now it's like, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, About it, time, I say. What a, what a you were ahead of the human. curve. You were, I think, twenty fourteen. Yeah, I paid the right people. Those guys <laughs> spent a lot of money, and uh, but I'm telling you, in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, we'll suck it up. I guess he's in okay shape. We'll do it. Whatever. Uh, Rudd last year, Evans now. How bitter and angry do you think like Renner and Ruffalo are right now? How much are they paying their publicists? <laughs> Didn't Ruffalo get it? I thought Ruffalo did have sexiest men, no? In your heart. In my heart. Yeah, yeah maybe that's Every what day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's in the wallpaper on my phone, so that's, that says that. Um, Who's yeah. next? Do, um, do you feel like... Uh, what about Downey? Downey? I mean, how did, how did, how did, he, how did, he, how did he miss? Uh, let's still, him. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah. By the way, speaking of stress, stress. I feel like he's the, the least stressed human being on the planet. Is he like the most still Zen man? Like he feels he's like... become the sort of sage um, Buddha, hasn't he? Yeah. I yeah. feel like there's no one more comfortable in their own skin, and yeah. I can't relate less. Like I don't. I think he he, he he having you know to have this incredible career and 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 all sorts of ups and downs. I think yeah. you know. And, and challenges, you, people like that, they have... They've come out the other side. They've come the other side, and it's an yeah, appreciation, yeah, yeah. you know, and and, uh, and 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 only from experience, you know, and I think uh, he's just loving every second of it, you know? You should, uh, I don't know if you've checked it out, the, the, the new doc about his dad is oh, amazing. See that. Senior is amazing. Mm. Very, speaking of intimate and like yeah. people in, it's it's remarkable. Oh, cool. The, um, so the, the, I, I've heard that the text thread still exists with the Avengers. Yeah. Who responds first? If you sent one to the thread right now, who pops in first? Who pops in last? Downey's pretty consistent. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, you want to um, wake him up now? <laughs> you want to text him? Yeah, what are you all doing, guys? Test? I did that once. I did that with. I was interviewing Mackie and Sebastian, and I said both of you text Evans at the same time and see who responds and see who responds. He responds to you first, and he responded to Mackie first, and Sebastian's I, heart died. Wow. It was, I watched his heart die. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to be. You don't want to get chat. in there. <laughs> I don't want my heart to die or someone else's. <laughs> um, looking ahead, I know you, you can never spill anything on the Marvel front, but um, where do you go with Thor at this point? I mean, here's the here's the conundrum I feel like you're in. Mm. Like, after Taika, if, I mean, maybe Taika comes back or not, but, like, what do you do if he doesn't come back? Like, can Thor, would Thor go back to dramatic? I think, would, like, you know? I mean, you look at Thor 1 and 2, they were quite similar. Ragnarok, Love and Thunder, similar. I think you just it's about reinventing it. Yeah. And I think... I've had such a unique opportunity, uh, it, even with sort of, the, I mean, Infinity War and Endgame to do very drastic things with the character. Um, I enjoy that, you know, I like keeping people on their toes, but it keeps me on my toes, it keeps me yeah. invested. And I've said this before, but when it becomes too familiar, I think there's there's a risk of getting lazy then, because like, oh, I know what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, again, I don't know if I'm even invited back. But um, if 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 I was, I think it would be a it would have to be a drastically different version. Yeah. Um, it, it tone everything, just for just for my own sanity. Yeah, I know. I, I hear can't. You. Uh, <laughs> have have I they think Paul you... lost his mind that last one? I think he's got to <laughs> <laughs> figure it out now. Um, have you ever felt like really out on a limb with that character? Like I would imagine, like ironically, some of the most dramatic stuff you did mm. was like as Fat Thor, and yeah, like right. being in that and having to dr deliver these really dramatic, emotional moments. Yeah, I'm sure on set you're like, wait, is this gonna work? Yeah, <laughs> um, you're always like, is this gonna work? <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I remember that scene where I sort of start breaking down, pitching everyone the mission, and talking about. Um, you know my family and who died and so on and yeah. and then 
it just your little moments like that in your career where it just, everything lines up and yeah. there was a bit, bit of improv and so on and I think it ended ended with me saying I want a Bloody Mary to to Downey and he said to me how do you feel and I said yeah I feel God, it's pretty special he goes every now and then a little like a few times in your career you have little moments where you hit the bullseye and it's like just in, in that you're in the sweet spot and he said I enjoy it and it was a really I really appreciated that because I definitely felt something special about that moment yeah. and um. Uh, 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 but I, who am I to judge, you know? Right. And so to have the, the godfather lean over and say, well done, son. You're, you're not the type <laughs> at, the, at the end of a take that you feel like you nailed. Be like, we got it, guys. Yeah. Moving on. We did Big it. Big fist pump. <laughs> Woo! It's the, it's the Mackie. Why cut. are we still filming? Pack it up. Yeah, we got the, it. Anthony Mackie cut the check <laughs> moment, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> do you, are you able to keep up with everything? Because I am paid to do this, Chris, and I can barely keep up with all the Marvel stuff. Like what percentage of all those shows? Oh have you no, watched? nothing. No, no, no. Right? And yeah, yeah, I, I would guy. love to. I'd love, yeah. I've seen. I saw an episode of um, that Loki, and I thought, oh, that's cool. You didn't watch all of Loki? Mate, Tom's I, gonna I've got cry three now, kids, mate. I've got three kids, and and I'm, um, you know, <laughs> to get off to gallivanting around the place, and and no, I, I haven't watched anything. Yeah. Um, it's not because I don't want to. Uh, I just haven't had time. No, I, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Do you watch – like, what do you watch when you have the opportunity? Like, are you a reality um, watcher? Is, do you watch with Elsa, with the family? Pinky Blinders has oh, been a favorite of mine. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, it's wicked. Uh, I could watch Killian Murphy all day. He's incredible. Amazing. Um, what have I watched? It's, I mean, look, I can't even – I don't know. <laughs> it, whatever my kids are watching. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. recently was Jackass, and I'm like, that's not a kid's movie. <laughs> And asking all sorts of questions, which I can't answer. Again, it's not so far <laughs> off from Limitless. It's, again, putting a body through, Yeah, you know, <laughs> Johnny Knoxville should be dead by now, too. That's right. No, maybe that's what it is, is testing the human potential there and yeah. how much we can suffer. You should be in the next Jackass movie. <laughs> yes. <it, laughs> then I definitely won't be doing another Thor movie unless he's in a wheelchair, because I reckon they'd break me. <laughs> and so Marvel, like, kind of realized what you were doing at a certain point. It was like, what the, uh, yeah. dude. So initially I had... Um, uh, the, well, the rope climb, which was a hundred foot rope dangling from a cable cart a uh, thousand feet off the ground between two mountains in Sydney, Australia. And uh, the furthest I'd climbed was like, yeah, I don't know, did, what was it? Feet, probably 20 feet or yeah. something. And um, in sort of training. And so now I'm at a hundred foot rope. I'd been training. It was supposed to be a truck pull. I'd hurt my back doing that. So we transitioned to the rope climb. My trainer said, don't get very big though because the heavier you are, the harder it is to get up that rope. <laughs> I then, in training, busted my ankle, tore the ligaments, and then Marvel stepped in and said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you can go do this crazy sure. thing, but do it after we finish for Love and Thunder. So that meant when I came back to shoot it, I was at Thor size, and my trainer said, ah, we're screwed, mate. <laughs> and so it, there was some technique involved, but it just became sheer will and grit and determination to get up that rope. It was like a silver, silverback gorilla right. just kind of going for it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Again, one of the more profound moments I found in the show was you talking to the uh, elderly gentleman who had been such a physical performer earlier mm. in his career. And like, look, you as somebody that like the body is very important in terms yeah. of the work that you've done. And like, that's something you probably have to think, or you, you need to think yeah. about. Our, our bodies don't last. No, absolutely. <laughs> and that's- uh, It's confronting. Yeah. Yeah, especially, you know, I mean, if you're, if, if, if for everybody, but um, I don't know, just in my personal experience, it's so much of my life has been around my physicality and, yeah. and, and being able to be outside and my happiness is so dependent on how much I've, I can train or, or surf or be active. Um, and, uh, you know, confront the, the 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 truth and the inevitability that it will all change and those things will d be diminished at a certain point is scary. Um, and I've had injuries over the years, and and it's my my whole mood changes. You know, yeah. I go I fall into a state of depression if I'm like my my back's down and I can't train and I can't move. And um, who am I if I can't uh, scale this mountain? Who am I? <laughs> it's more just the in, the endorphin kick. Yes. The sort of like yeah. the, it's meditative for me. You know, I get out of my out of my head and I'm into my body for that space. And you're just thinking about what's in front of you. And um, th that is the the emotional uh, component that training gives me is equally as important as the physical but it's it's i also learned to train differently now and approach things differently and with a little more sort of 
uh, sort of caution, except the series. This, the series is trying to kill me. Outside of this, <laughs> everything else is caution. Um, but you train smart, you know, as opposed to just kind of throwing it at the wall and everything's a, a flat stick. It's like, there's a better way of doing this. So when somebody comes to you, like your good buddy Josh Horowitz, and says, okay, step one, I want to get in better shape. I want to live more healthily. <laughs> food, or di- food, diet, exercise. What's, yeah. what's step one in the Chris Hemsworth guide? To- step one. Uh, figure out the purpose and the why that you want to get in shape. I want to impress you. You want to impress that. me? If that'll, I don't know if that'll hold two for, make you for happy. very long. That's all I've been seeking for. I'm already years. happy. I'm already proud of you. <laughs> now that I think it's figure no, like no. the anything, whether it be dietary training that you're going to adhere to, uh, is what's or, or that the, the thing that you can stick to is the thing that's going to work. Yeah. I could give you ten different things, and you might hate all of them. You might, you know, but not want to go on this one, diet. You might not like other. running. You yeah. might not like, you know, this kind of training. So I'd say try a bunch of different things and see what you you uh, you have an I- interest in, you know, and and what works. And and uh, also keep moving. You know, the, the movement creates the motivation. Right. Don't sit in the couch and wait. Just know that and trust that there's not a single person on the planet that. That, that trains and so on that would tell you that once you start, you don't become addicted to it. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and so it should be because you live a longer, healthier, happier life. It sounds like, uh, I'm sure extraction too is probably a very light um, lift for you physically. <laughs> yeah. What's the, is there a subtitle, by the way? Is it like Extraction 2, more extractions? Yeah. <laughs> Rake's not dead. Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, Surprise. Yeah. Spoiler. Oh, he's back. Uh, That's too many demo. people watched it, so we brought him back. I know. <laughs> it's like, we were so proud that we're like, no, nah, we're killing him. We're killing the character, and, you know, that's it. And then they're like, there might be a sequel, though. <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, that was crazy, that film. We, I don't know, as you do, it's like, what do we do now? Bigger. You know, more. more. Yeah. And um, we we have an even longer one sequence in the film. We had uh, a helicopter, you know, the moving train going at, I don't know, 40 clicks or whatever, and, the, and a helicopter landing on the train, six guys coming out, climbing down the cart into a fight with me. I go up on the top, grab a gun. I'm shooting at the helicopter that's now flying backwards in front of the train, going at full speed. Um it was that it was wild, and then we had three hundred extras, extras in a sort of old boy type sequence, um, choreographed fight. Uh, it, it, Speaking it, my language, yeah, it Hello. was wild. Um, this this film's it's next level. It's cool. Let's get right to it and talk about the most important article of clothing in my closet. It's the T-shirt. It's the bare essential. It needs to fit right. It needs to feel great. That's why I'm so excited to present our sponsor, True Classic Tees. Guys, we have the perfect gift for your wish list. They are a gift for you, for her, for everybody. They will make you feel good about yourself. You'll get compliments from the men and women in your life. Trust me on this. True Classic has already helped over 2 million men look great in their tees, and now you can save big while you do so. Get 25% off True Classic with my exclusive link, trueclassic.com slash happy sad, and the discounts don't stop there. You're gonna save even more during the site-wide sale. Support happy sad confused and check out trueclassic.com slash happy sad. And trust me guys, this works for every body type. Look, I've been different body types in my life. I know what a struggle it is, but for the tall guys out there, the big guys out there, the sizes go up to triple XL. They've got you covered. And the way these are tapered, the way these are done, you're gonna notice a difference immediately. They taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter around the chest and the shoulders. That makes for a more desirable look. Trust me, this isn't like my forte. I I didn't know this stuff until I tried on these shirts and noticed a major, major difference. So right now, experience it for yourself. Get 25% off trueclassic.com slash happy sad. Free shipping is included on purchases over a hundred bucks. That's 25% off at trueclassic.com slash happy sad. Santa won't be the only one slaying thanks to True Classic. Look, you know I'm a big old nerd. I'm never going to see the Star Trek movie, am I? It's the, Did you read the script? No, did, did you yeah. like that script? I got script? asked about the, the, that the other day. Um, you were going to come back. It was going to be almost like a buddy movie between father yeah. and son, a time travel kind of thing. Yeah, it just wasn't – it, it, it's a few reasons, but okay. it, it didn't really um, – it wasn't what I sort of where was thinking it would have been or could have been. Okay. And I thought there'd be, you know, oh, cool, well, let's figure that out and keep going. And then – I think everyone just got busy and so on, but yeah, um, be a bit weird now to flash back to your father and why is he so much older than the first time when he died? <laughs> so well, at least we still have that sequence for my money is just one of the best. Uh, we could campaign and get it going though. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, 
have you read the by the way you worked with Michael Mann obviously on Black yeah. Hat. I've heard some people talk, and I thought of this too. I was reading the Heat sequel book uh. that he wrote. Oh, I didn't know he wrote a book. You don't yeah. know about this. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's and it centers on the Val Kilmer character from Heat, mm. Chris. Chris. Mm. Who I have casted in my own brain, and others have. Oh, really? Yeah. You, oh, Mr. Cool. Hosworth, what do you think? That that because he cool. wants to make a movie. He wants he does, to do the yeah. Heat sequel. Yeah, I love Michael Mann. Um, it, it, Michael Mann is is has very intense shooting style. A lot of takes, long days, a lot of a lot of coverage, and he, he's a master at it. Um, I kind of love my time at home with the kids, and so I'd, I'd have a series of chat and go, <laughs> yeah, "I'll do it, I'll do in, it, yeah. but let's do some more comfortable work hours." Because um, I don't know, I'm at a different point in my life where I like agree, doing yeah. 20 hours on a set. Um, I don't know. I'd, 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 I'd rather be with my kids. <laughs> He's the only. Po- he was on the podcast. He came into my office. He comes. I in. say that with full love and respect. That's no, not of a dick. It's it's an appreciation for his stamina, which I worry if I could match it. <laughs> no, I hear it. He came into my office with a binder, yeah. Chris, of like reference material of his own work. Amazing. Huh? Put it on the desk as we start this like hour long conversation. And I'm like already intimidated. Yeah. I'm like, dude. Yeah, this guy. I worked with him, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, to talk about the character." I was like, "Yeah, I was thinking this," and he goes, "And a big binder of, of my backstory is there on the table." I'm like, "Oh, huh, you wrote my backstory? Okay, <laughs> cool." And uh, and every conversation we'd have, it, someone would type it up, and I'd get like a transcript of it afterward. And I'm like, "This is there is this the attention to detail yeah. is is uh, is masterful and incredible." Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, He's shooting at the moment. Isn't he just it? finished it. I Ferrari, think. Ferrari yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Do you do you uh, do you consult with the brothers on what they're doing? When, did you know that Liam was going to don his crazy hair as the Witcher? What do you think about? <laughs> yeah. Are you excited to make fun of that hair for the next few years? Uh, I didn't. Does he have to have that hair? I don't I think know. So. I don't he think does. It a crew cut. I don't think that's possible. No, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't watched the show, and I don't okay. know um, the books. Yeah, I'm stoked for him. Um, he's kind of been itching to do something, uh, something like that, and. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll he'll fit right in. It's cool. It's gonna be awesome. Um, <laughs> okay, and our remaining moments. I want to uh, mention. I've been asking folks the last uh, couple of years when we've needed comfort more than ever, <laughs> the pandemic, et cetera. Do you mm. have a comfort movie? Like, what's the movie you turn on when? Yeah, I'll tell it? you. There's a movie okay. when I'm a little hungover, mm-hmm. uh, and and or it's I'm just feeling down. Wedding crashes. <laughs> I've seen it. My wife's like, oh, again. I'm like, come on, it'll make us feel better. And it always delivers, <laughs> it's doesn't the it? Best, mate. It is the best. It's, I think it's one of my favorite films. It always works. Yeah, I, I yeah. support that one. Uh, is What's there, yours? You know, what's a weird one. I, I'm going to sound like a big old nerd, and this is not anyone's version. I would go Fury Road. I would go Star Trek. Those yeah. kind of like big, like yeah. assured nerd movies. Mm. I was a nerd growing up. I know, big surprise. Hey, dude, just how was I, mate? I watched I, when my mates were going out on the weekends it's through high school. I'd just be watching movies, not because I wanted to be an actor, because I wanted to live in you know Middle Earth, yeah. or I wanted to be in uh, Star Wars on that. Well, I remember right us here. talking years ago, like when you were doing Huntsman, and you were like, you mentioned I think like Mad Mardigan, as, yeah. And I was like, you're speaking, my, yes, yeah. This, I like this man. <laughs> the this funny man. thing about Huntsman was I thought we were making Princess Bride. And then with three of the most uh, talented women in the business were giving Oscar-worthy performances, and I'm there giving like romantic comedy bris. Hey I was like, uh, anybody want to break the fourth wall? <laughs> oops. <laughs> like, yeah. no, it's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I was like, uh. <laughs> do you have another limitless season in you? I mean, or is is that pushing your luck? Like um, they came close enough to killing I you. I don't know. Time? Again, I don't know. What? Yeah. Look, never say never to anything. Um, uh, um, I produce this one, and if we do another one, I'll produce that. Um, I think it might be f- time for someone else to come and step in and, <laughs> and, and have a go. Throw a Ruffalo in there. Yeah. Sexy, next sexiest the man sexy alive. Man. <laughs> or Scarlet. She'd be pretty awesome. Oh, wait. Well, one last thing. Hulk Hogan, still on the docket or no? Is that still being talked about? Um, it's still being talked about. I don't know what they're talking about, though. <laughs> I know. It's like, no, I asked about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, there's, still, there's a script and a thing. And. Um, Todd Phillips is uh, doing his Joker, doing Joker thing. film, yep. and yep. Um, I, I mean that one scares me in the sense of like, God, do I want to get that big? You know, it was a the, the last time I this was the biggest I ever got, and a lot of it for Thor, and a lot of it was just I was in you know sort of COVID lockdown sort of scenario, treating it like prison. I was like eating and training, eating and training, and yeah. and, um, and then and, but it was like, just so hard to maintain, and and 
I, yeah, I don't know. The thought of doing that again and some, because yeah, I think he's even bigger than what I was in that film, it scares me. <laughs> maybe maybe next Thor. Look, we've done Fat Thor. We've done, like, just yeah. Jack Thor. Maybe we go just Thin Thor. Normal Thor. I'd love that. Yeah, CGI Thor. <laughs> CGI, like, Why does everyone else get their muscles painted on and no one's offered me that? So I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> get the, this I'm man's gonna, put in the hard work, guys. Yeah, Let him off. Let yeah, him just enjoy use, life. Use my body from the last film. Uh. <laughs> um. Man, it's been so great to go on this journey with you the last dozen years. I look forward to many more conversations. Um, you're one of the good ones, my friend. Thank you for you doing too. the podcast, finally. Thanks, buddy. Um, and my thanks to Chris. Thanks to the Paley Center for hosting this. They're amazing. And yeah. um, everybody should honestly check out Limitless. I'm obsessed. It's a good one, man. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. You're a champion. Thanks.